start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rakak, Radash. In Hebrew, that will be giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Rakak, Radash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Mills on for teaching us his truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring and doing the work to push this gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And I'm going to continue down the path that I started last week. So when we zoom in on my lessons here, I was sort of doing like a who, what, where, when, why, and answering those questions when it comes to serving the Lord. Like this video here, who are the servants of the Lord? We broke it down with the scriptures that the servants of the Lord are the Israelites whom the Lord hath chosen. Then the next video after that, I went into how do you serve the Lord? And you serve the Lord by serving his people. Because Yahweh Shai said, if you do it for the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. So this lesson here is going to follow this same order. Now this lesson is going to be titled, what do you do to serve the Lord? Because people got it all twisted up on how you serve the Lord. You know, most of the stuff that people be doing, the Lord is in no need of that. Most of the stuff that people do and they say they're serving the Lord is nowhere in the scriptures. But just to refresh a few, our memory of some of the scriptures that we covered last week, before we continue with this lesson, let's say John 15 and 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Who's the Lord talking to? To the Israelites. Are we going to prove that he's talking to the Israelites only when he says, I have chosen you? So you can't choose to give your life to the Lord to serve him. You can't choose to be a servant of the Lord. The Lord has to choose you to be his servant. Like those who saw Rush Hour 2, Chris Tucker, that's at the massage place in Hong Kong, he picked the women that will massage him. That's the Lord picking his servants. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So the focus here was that the Lord chooses us. We don't choose the Lord. And it's Israel who was chosen by the Lord. That's proved in Isaiah 41 and 8. But thou Israel art my servant. So the Israelites would be the servants of the Lord. And we got the 12 tribes of Israel. In summary, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So you can't be a white man serving the Lord. You can't be a Chinese man serving the Lord. You can't be an African or Arab or East Indian or anything that's outside of this list here. But thou Israel art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. It's because the Lord chose Jacob. So when we see, I have not chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The Lord chose Jacob, Israel, the seed, the chosen seed of Abraham, my friend. Abraham was known as a friend of the Lord. And to prove that this is talking about the same people, and it says, but thou Israel are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, that's going to take us to Genesis 32 and 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, hast thou power with Yahweh and with man and has prevailed. So Israel is the Lord's servant because Israel slash Jacob is who the Lord chose to serve him. And it wouldn't be anybody of the nation of Israel. So for more specifically, we get that here, Second Chronicles 29 and 11. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you. 
And who has the Lord chosen again? Who has the Lord chosen again? Jacob, Israel, whom I have chosen. But it says my sons. So serving the Lord is a man's responsibility, not the woman's. So you see any woman claiming they serving the Lord, uh, that's a scam. They can honor and praise his name, but um, they can't serve the Lord. This is a man's duty. My sons be not now negligent, for Yahweh have chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Meaning that we will serve the Lord um, by prophesying, teaching, and doing the work in the temple. We don't have the temple right now, so the only job description uh, that we maintaining right now is teaching our people and prophesying. But when we get into Matthew 25, 25th chapter, we're going to start at the 35th verse. This goes into how you actually serve the Lord. So, Yahweh Shah speaking, let's read. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking again. For I was and hunger, and ye gave me meat. He's talking to the disciples. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then should a righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? So the Lord said, you know, I was hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, all these things, and you came unto me. So the Lord was saying that the righteous will say, Lord, when did we do these things for you? Because when did the people ever see the Lord um, starving or homeless or sick or in prison? And they took him in and healed him. And the king, who is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done, let me read this again. And as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. So Yahweh Shah said, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. So if you done it to Yahweh Shah's brethren, his people, you done it to him, which would be the people on this sign. So you serve the Lord by serving his people. Then let's continue. We're going to go to the flip side. For I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? And this part of the convo will be geared more towards the so-called white man because the white man to do for him, himself, and nobody else. Then he shall answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Again, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not. So if you didn't do it for the least of his brethren, his fellow Israelites, you didn't do it to the Lord. So in America, the white men say they giving sandwiches out to the community. They take donations, you know, to give to their white public school system, to donate to the cops. You know, they'd be out there reading a couple scriptures, but you didn't do it for the Lord's people. Therefore, you didn't do it for the Lord. Now, let's read these two verses again. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it 
unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have not done it to me. So you serve the Lord by serving, by serving his people. And as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. So you serve the Lord by serving his people. That's not praising, shouting the name of the Lord. The Lord has no need of anybody to do anything for him, but his people are in need. For example, when Yahweh was on the scene, who was he healing? The Israelites. Who was he teaching daily? The Israelites. You know, who was he ministering to? Washing their feet, feeding them, giving them food, water, performing miracles, casting out spirits. He was doing it for his brethren, his people. That's how you serve the Lord. Now, we're going to get into what do you do to serve the Lord. So, what do you do to serve the Lord? Ezekiel 3 and 4. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel. So, again, this is a given. Go to the house of Israel because you serve the Lord by serving his people. Go to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. That's how you serve the Lord. I think that's the last scripture we ended out with. You know, you serve the Lord by speaking his words and to his people. You know, it's not donations. It's not a food drive. It's not donations from the goodwill. But let's continue. And there will be certain things that we're supposed to speak. You can't just speak whatever you want to speak. Because again, it says, speak with my words unto them. And then, as we scroll down a little bit, go get thee to them of the captivity, we in captivity, unto the ch children of thy people. And speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord. So we speaking, thus says the Lord. Rather they will hear or rather they will forbear. So we speaking to the house of Israel. Now in this generation, it's a certain order and it's a certain checklist that we got to hit when we speaking unto the house of Israel. And Deuteronomy 30 and 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So we know the curses of Deuteronomy. So again, it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curses. So when the curses are upon us, which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord Yahweh have driven thee. So it would be a certain point in prophecy in history that we would call the curses to mind. And calling them to mind is meaning you know, speaking about the curses uh, and seeing that they only apply to us. That's calling the curses to mind. You know, when you read in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, you're like, you know what? These fit our people. You know what? We got to be the Israelites because of these curses. Um, that's calling the curses to mind. And we would call these curses to mind among all the nations all over the earth where the Lord scattered us. And it's the curses of Deuteronomy, how we can identify ourselves as the Lord's chosen people. So to serve the Lord, you got to speak to his people and to the house of Israel. And one of the first things we should be pointing out is the curses of Deuteronomy to show our people who we are. Verse two, and shall return unto the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and shall obey his voice, According to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. So, yeah, to tell our people to repent. Repent is not something you speak. It's something you do. You can't just say y'all repent, but you're still in the world. You got to come out of the world. So to repent means to turn back. So, among our people... Wherever we are at in the earth, we would call the curses to mind to remind our people who we are. Which is uh, the first step to prophesying. 
And then once we tell our people who we are, we can go to the next step. That's Ezekiel 3 and 16, 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Yeah, he made us a watchman to Israel, not to the world, not to the white man, not to the African. And the watchman watches for danger. America's future um, is non-existent. So there's a impending doom. It's danger, doom on the horizon. So we the watchman for our people, for the house of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Therefore, hear the, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So, yeah, we get after we tell our people who they are by bringing the curses to mind, we give the people a warning from the Lord himself. So to serve the Lord, you speak to his people. But a lot of this speaking is warning our people of the danger of the doom to come. And this summarizes this warning in about four verses. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at dying hand. So if we, somebody, we see somebody in wickedness being in they off in the world, not knowing who the Lord is, not knowing who they are, not knowing how to come out of the world to turn back to the Lord and we don't warn them that man or woman is going to die in his sin and his blood will be, be required at our hand. It's going to be like we guilty for not warning these people. Yet I've not warned the wicked and he turned not from his righteousness nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So yeah, if we warn the wicked, come out of the world, turn back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and they don't listen, again, he gonna die in his sin, but our hands are clean. Verse 20 again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. Now this pretty much somebody falling out of the truth, going back into the world. And I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So if we see somebody that was in the truth, in the faith, go out into the world, we got to warn them to come back. Don't fall into that. And if they die, they're going to die in their sin, but their blood will be on our hands. Nevertheless, have thou warned a righteous man, and the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, meaning he come back into this truth, he come back in to continue in the faith. He shall surely live, because he is warned, and thou hast delivered thy soul. So yeah, we speak to our people to warn them who they are, and then we give them a warning from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai himself, that yo, uh, judgment is near. Those who in the world, off in the wickedness, you got to come back into this truth and, to, you know, come out of the world. And our people that know this info that was in this truth, we got to warn them to stay in. Don't fall back into the ways of the world. And why are we warning our people? It's, that's Mark 1 and 14. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Yahweh Shah came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So we wanted our people to tell them what? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So yeah, repent meaning to turn back to the Lord. Stop doing what you currently doing off in the world and believe the gospel. Believe the report, prophecy, um, all of that. But the kingdom of God is at hand, is near. But before we get through that, we got to go through judgment. So that's what this warning is about. That this current place is going to be wiped out to make room for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Israel. 
And then beyond that, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, uh, scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And it's profitable for doctrine. So yeah, all scripture was inspired by the Most High. And all scripture is profitable for doctrine. Meaning every single word, every single page is worthy to be taught. Every single page, every single word can benefit us in the spirit. That's why the book of Romans say things that was written aforetime was written for our learning. Meaning the things written in this book before our time was written for us to learn today. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, you know, we tell our people who they are, you know, according to the scripture, to the curses of Deuteronomy, and we warn them, you know, that judgment is coming. Come out of the world, turn back to the Lord. And the warning is because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This current kingdom, America, the rest of the world is going to be wiped out. And those who don't come back to the Lord, they're going to be wiped out with this place. And then besides that, we teach all scripture, everything, everything can be learned because it applies now. So in doing all of that, we prophesy. That's why the scriptures say, also, I'd rather that ye prophesy. Now, the last one would be John 15. I'm sorry, 21 to 15. So when they had dined, Yahweh said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? So Yahweh Shai asked Simon, do you love me more than this here? Simon said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. That's once. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Simon said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. A second time. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Love is thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Love is thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh shall say unto him, Feed my sheep. So people claim to love the Lord and they serve in the Lord, but they not feeding his sheep, his people. The best way to show your love for the Lord is to feed his sheep. His people. Because remember Matthew 25 and what 40. And as much as you did it unto the least of these, you did it to me. So if you do it for the least of his people, the least of his brethren, you did it for the Lord. And if you do it not unto his people, you did it not for the Lord. And then serving the Lord is a continual process. You got to give diligence like Christian church in America, the white man that might pick one day out the week to have service. They might have Bible study on Wednesday, Wednesdays. So you so-called feeding the people twice a week. The Lord asks him three times, meaning this, um, you gotta, you gotta be serving. You gotta serve the Lord's people throughout the week. Not once or twice. And then again, a lot of you white pastors and you Christians, y'all y'all serving everybody else but the people on this sign. Because what did the scripture say? As thou has did it unto the least of these, you um you did it to me. Let's read this. And as much as he did it unto the least of these, my brethren, he have done it to me. So um you serve the Lord by serving his people, tell them who they are, give them warning to turn back to the Lord because the kingdom of heaven is at hand that comes with judgment. And then you teach all scripture that's profitable for reproof and instruction. And you would teach multiple times throughout the week. It's a continuous process. 
Like, you got children, you got to feed them continually, multiple times a day, every day of the week. So this is how you serve the Lord, is by, is by speaking unto his people, speaking the words of prophecy. It's not having donations, it's not having a block party, you raising money for the church. It's, it's by speaking. The scripture don't say nothing about giving. Um, it don't say nothing about having food drives and none of that. But that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.